All right. Okay. Um, I'm just continuing with the um, uh, the different phases right here in, in the the pictures you see here in the in the back. Oh, see the pictures. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, these are part of the corns that were showing these these anomalies. Uh, I did a harvest today uh, about these corns, and some of them uh, they. They really deal very well in, in the harvesting. It's still I'm washing the specimens that I show you in the pictures, but uh, I keep seeing uh, the same anomalies in my third phase. What I mean by this is that the plants that I, uh, the new seeds that I planted, I'm washing as they develop uh, like a tree stalk. You know, the corn is putting three branches, not branches, but three, it's, it's, it's coming in three from one corn, from one seed. I have seen uh, all the ones they are showing two, and others, uh, you see here in the, in, the, in the picture number two, that's a phase three that I'm using the same seed, and they are repeating the same anomalies. They are growing since the beginning, since I saw them. They are growing three uh, grass-like type of things, you know, branches going up. They are developing right now, but I saw already a few of those uh, repeating. I'm just watching the, the, how, they, how they develop. Picture five and six are the ones that I took some pictures. Uh, this is the area. Yeah, can we can we can we go back on the picture of the corn on the table, please? Uh, the we see black, we see brown, we see some which have no seed on them. Is that normal, even with the normal agriculture? Uh, what happened in these ones? What I found is that uh, uh, they didn't uh, get pollinized, you know, well, some of those. It could be something going on over there that they, they didn't get the, the, uh, the full um, uh, pollinization. That happens sometimes, you know, when to, because these corns were so tall that some of them, you know, the, the male uh, um, flower broke and then they didn't get to be colonized on time. Forms come like that. They don't get the full, you know, strength of the, of the male plant. And that's what happens, you know. It, the, the blue corn, this was the case. It didn't completely got full. The other ones, they got completely, you know, the, all the uh, lines uh, got completely full. But uh, that's what I'm, 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 I, I was, you know, uh, the ones that is, they stay still, I mean, standing, those were producing really full corns. The ones that they lose, the, the male flower, it, that's what uh, uh, you see over there. But I try to get everything, you know, a piece here where, where the thing was um, uh, failing because of the conditions that I, I was setting over there at the, uh, the planting process. Now in my third phase, the plants are already more space and they have the full um, um, uh, separation between them for them to really mature at the level of the strength of the, of the plant. And this time I already put in, in my third phase, I'm using the foliar applications of the CO2 bands. I already did today my first uh, application for the third phase, and they have developed really strong. And since the August 10, that's when I planted the seeds for the phase three of the corn, the other, uh, the variety that, that I have in the third phase are all uh, color corns. All of them are just different colors, blue corn, uh, pink corn, uh, and some variet varieties of what you see here too. Those are part of their phase, but this time 
They, I follow the same procedure. I use this basket that you see in the middle to do my plasmatic soaking right there. And then I did apply the guns in the moment that I put the seed on the ground, in the ground, you know. And they really develop. Right now, they are almost uh, two feet high. You can see in the next picture, you will see uh, the plant already developing at this time. Uh, I'm going to start my irrigation uh, tomorrow with the uh, uh, filter that I did with the uh, nano mesh. I did a nano mesh that I put in, in a PVC pipe and I'm circulating the water through there to irrigate those uh, plants. Like I say, today they got the first application of the, uh, of the plant foliar. I did um, uh, the uh, uh, CO2 and CO3 mix with amino acids. This is Which the, one is giving better results? It's what I it, just right now with the guns, with the nanomaterials, without uh, putting any guns, they already develop well. But today is when I want to start looking at the at the progress because now from now on they're going to receiving the gunsified water, and what I'm doing uh, uh, was similar to what Renner was saying that you just get the water in the bottles and, and get the the water energized. But uh, what I found too is that we can wash the guns when we are washing and use that water to spray, to spray foliar. I don't need to apply the CO2 guns straight to the plant. I just get a big container and wash the guns in the structured water and then I get that water and I spray it, uh, foliar. It's, it's almost like uh, uh, what is, they are doing lately in what is called agro-homeopathy they get the same homeopathic application, but this with the guns, you know. In the, I'm doing that experiment too, and seeing the, the, the results uh, for the pest control, and see that the, the, the plants, they are not attacked, you know, by the, by the uh, different uh, um, um, natural things, so that they eat the plants, you know. Time of the July, August, that's when the, a lot of the trees of nature, you know, develop and they eat everything. But I'm seeing that the plant is being protected just with the 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 uh, nanomaterials. I mean, with the nanomaterials at this point, because a, a when they get a certain level of strength they get protected and they are not attacked anymore. They are getting to that point right now. And Can you repeat I'm... that again? Uh, we missed it. What, what I said, when the plants get up to certain level of immunity, and the plant gets str stronger, they are not attacked anymore. In the, in the, in the beginning, when they are developing, they get attacked easily. You know, if the um, uh, the water is not uh, plenty, and if there is too much heat, and then they get attacked. And if there is too much vegetation around, but I have found that the plants are getting stronger and they are not being attacked, uh, um, uh, as I see it before in, in other conditions. And so the nanomaterial, the guns, works as a, uh, what do you call it, deterrent? Yeah, like, like repellent, you know, and that's what I'm seeing. Like I said, today I just did my, the foliar application. I, I used, when I was washing, because I put about seven trays of CO2 uh, capture, uh, like a few days ago, and I got the CO2 that already uh, captured uh, as I was uh, washing them. You know, I used the water 
that I was getting from the uh, when I was washing, and that's what I use for the uh, gansified water, you know, to for the foliar application. But I use only a small amount of the of the CO two. Do you think if we go back into what you said, if you use the water which goes through, let's say, copper uh, oxide nanocoated, and you can use the water like a pesticide? Yeah. If you water the whole plant? Yeah, especially what I wanted to do with the uh, CO2 copper, apply those in, uh, in the roots. CO2 copper and CH3 and CO2 to apply it foliar. And then I protect the plant from the upper and from the lower part, that way. And that's part of what I'm doing right now. Uh, CO2 uh, and the copper, ox copper oxide guns are gonna be applied in the, um, in the roots. On the ground and the other ones are gonna be applied foliar to the plant. And I think that that will be one of the uh, uh, the things why the plants right now are not being attacked, you know. Um, and I want to keep, you know, taking videos as they develop because they're already almost uh, two feet tall since I began the, the third phase with this. But uh, like I said, this belongs to the... Um, to the, uh, the color corns that I got in the first phase. The idea with this seed is that I can plant it, you know, in the four seasons. That's the reason I'm replanting what I got in, in um, spring and get it now at this level in, in um, September. And that will give me to the end of the year to, uh, to get a harvest. And now with the application of the uh, the gans gansified water, and then I'm hoping I want to have more better results because lately the other uh, uh, trials I didn't use the uh, gansified water. Even I didn't do I didn't do any application of the of the foliar application of the um, of the guns. Now um, I'm going more to regularly with those and see if this time, you know, I want to have a, a plenty of harvest with the corns. But so far, eh, I purposely choose a piece of the land that is not, a, I would say, um, very rich in the, in the, in the matter uh, content. Because I have places where I have a good land but I choose this land that is kind of sandy-like uh, with the purpose of adding the, uh, the nanomaterials to see if I, if I can fix more nitrogen that way and then use the water in those conditions that the ground is not completely rich in the uh, organic matter. I'm using just whatever I cut, you know, in the, in the process and then I just mix it but this land is kind of sandy and I'm, I'm getting still very uh, good results with that kind of, of conditions, you know. Uh, I have uh, in the next phase, I'm gonna grow uh, the um, uh, wheat. I'm gonna do the wheat field, but this is gonna be four hectares. Of, can, of I, can I ask you a question? Um, we know that even the plants use protein, or uh, amino acid, which is say, not protein, as a line of feeding using what you call nitrogen. Uh, as we see with the CO2 kits, if we, let's say, place a CO2 kits around the tree, where it attracts more nitrogen to create the amino acid, you think is would that become a natural fertilizing uh, condition, or do we feed the plant directly on the leaf without going through the roots? Yeah, my idea before was to uh, to circulate the guns with a, a loop around the area and create already a field. Even I was thinking doing the same type of uh, you know looping 
the the field with a huge uh, hose and just circulate the guns, you know, instead of to put those uh, CO2 capture uh, kit, I just put the whole thing in, 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 the, in, in the process and create, you know, uh, a circle similar to that instead to be putting, you know, um, a kit. And I can that way too, uh, you know, attract the what we're talking about. You know, get the more nitrogen from the air. And the other thing that, that I'm adding to this is the I'm trying to use the rainwater of a, a magnet to attract more nitrogen into the into the mixture in the hose that I want to put it uh, on the ground. That way, the rainwater already has some kind of frequency with the nit nitrogen. Now activated with the guns, uh, mix, you know, rainwater mixed with CO2 and CH3 circulate. That will create conditions to attract. You know, there, there, there is a question mark uh, which has been hanging around with us for some time. Uh, most of the fertilizers are high enriched with uh, nitrogen. That's why you buy them. What about if you, if you can burn the fertilizer to bring it in the Gans state or the nano state and put it in the water and just uh, then use the water or a field of the water around your pipe as a process of uh, giving nitrogen without fertilizers with all the damage on the ground? You know, uh, put a, put a, uh, put a fertilizer which is burned, uh, burn it if it's possible. It can, be, it can be done. Most of them are in granule, most of it anyway. Um, and uh, go through the process of creating the guns of it, the water guns, and then uh, make that guns water in a pipe. Or uh, hold it in a container in a in a tank and pass the water which is going to the plant over the over the over the tube or container with the um, gas water in it. Would it yeah. pass with the nitrogen in? Yeah, uh, that that was my next step that I'm going to be doing. You know, but I was using the, the the idea you are giving me right now. But I was putting in the ping pong balls. And the water is going to pass through uh, uh, the vortex created by the two uh, starship reactors inside. In that formation, those uh, fertilizers are going to be in the ping pong balls too. And they are going to uh, gansify the water to also create that the same condition to, about the, the hint uh, that you are giving me right now. But I don't know, in my next step was to burn the bone of the, of the cows and start getting the fertilizer from there and, and also get the, uh, I want to get different plants that I want to burn and going to create guns with, the, with them. That was part of my next addition to, the, uh, to my surface because this area is not full of organic matter and I was trying to go and um, and do that. I already got my hose already nano coated right now. I haven't. I am in the process of nano coating the hoses that are going to be in the lines where this corn is growing as the as a way to do a permanent fertilizer creation for this time. You know, I already have few meters of of these hoses that are going to be placing now. In the in the last time, you said to put copper or, or metal pipes in, in certain areas. I didn't understand that part. Just to nanocode the hoses and then put also pieces of, of metal pipe in- You can areas. do, you can do. Because if you nanocode the pipe themselves, uh, if it's a copper pipes, you can do extension with the nano copper and then the uh, the plastic which are nano coated, or you just can do the same with anything. Because we are looking into this to to produce these pipes as a hose pipes here in Italy. 
that uh, we 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 market it as a pipe with a with a what do you call it with a like a fertilizer in it. We nano coat the pipes at the point of production. This is something we are looking into it now, or we can do like a, a sections that they can divert the CO2 or what do you call it the water through copper oxide or pesticide, this is something we're going to test in the coming weeks here. Well, I think it's, it's, going, to, it's going to be a good addition that are going to be adding to this, uh, to this um, uh, process. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and I think that now with the, um, uh, because the winter time is coming here, and, uh, yeah. and the chili peppers that I have too, you know, I'm trying to see if I can create some conditions for this time uh, for the plants to be protected against the uh, 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 the freeze. Even though the last year, you know, I lose only probably 5% of the plants and the rest are still standing and producing a lot of the chili peppers and people who also grew the how much tree. would you have lost in a normal condition everything i mean the people who i was talking today they lost all the crops all the chili peppers and said you're still alive yes and mine is still here growing and they had they have to cut them and replant and, and replant the ones that they they, they um, saw because they lost everything and all my plants are still, you know, standing because of the uh, nanomaterials that are just the big nails that I put on, on the root. That causes already, you know, a lot of, of, the, um, of the protection. But at this time that I'm creating the mesh, I want to uh, do some of the, of the loopings, you know, around the uh, PVC pipes. Uh, to also uh, uh, see how they behave this time, you know, uh, with the uh, with the freeze, and get the conditions on the of the soil uh, uh, more um, um, the feel to create a, a, a stronger feel with the now the application of the guns water because before i didn't apply the the guns you know all the nanomaterials now i'm going to be doing more regular foliar applications to the plant and see if they become stronger against the uh the frost that's part of the preparations that i'm doing you know from now now to the end of the um, of the year and also seeing that uh, um, uh, before, you know, there are certain pests that they uh, affect the chili peppers. And now they are, you know, they are not being affected. After, you know, the process of, of strengthening the ground, seems the, that the, uh, the flowering and the biomass of the plant it really increase. A lot and that's this proof that you know the the immune system of the plant is being strengthened by the uh, application of the nanomaterials and as uh, for the for, for now in this phase my third phase i will not be also applying the uh, identified water to the to the plants and also i want to do the, the different you know i want to burn the ashes of the uh, whatever I'm cutting there and create some guns with them, you know, to create those kind of agro applications with, uh, with guns, you know. But so far the, the corns that they were showing uh, the, the anomalies, I'm still watching them to develop the, the corn, you know. Uh, still have new the new sets of corns that I'm growing. Even there, there were uh, native uh, varieties from this area. They are showing a, a massive growth. They are growing bigger than how, how they regul regularly grow in this uh, area. And some people see and oh, this is the same corn, but it's yours too big. So this is just completely going. 
similar to the other ones, they are measuring, you know, 11 feet, 12 feet, when they don't grow at this height uh, in, in here in this area. And that proves me that, you know, the, the nanomaterials are really even regardless of the seed, they are, uh, the plant is developing taller than the normal size that we see here. Are they, do they become stronger, as you said? Do you see pests on it, that you need to use pesticide? No, I don't need to use anything. But, but the thing is, they are growing so fast, uh, so quickly, you know, if a, a, if a rain uh, really comes, they can bend them because it, it needs a little, it needs some time for them to get uh, stiffer, you know, and stronger. But they are growing, growing too fast and the biomass is, 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 is kind of increasing at that level. And I have to be, you know, because we are in the rain season and this is a time when it rains a lot and they bend. And, and what I noticed in this, and they are really very uh, juicy, you know, uh, going up. But because they are growing so fast, uh, and there are some, there's, there could be some problems, you know, at, at that level. But the ones there are um, having more, uh, I would say, uh, the ones that are developing stronger, those are immediately, you know, showing the sign that they're, they're going to be producing really big uh, corn. That's what I'm watching in me. In my second phase that I have already some areas, you know, they are, they are showing those conditions. They are growing taller, but so quickly, you know, and I said, man, the, these nanomaterials are really pushing the ground to really capture the uh, nitrogen because corn needs a lot of nitrogen and they are pulling they're pulling a lot of nitrogen from the uh, uh, nanomaterials that I put in those beds that's what I'm you know observing and but I want to repeat the same thing if I see you know that char characteristic is being repeated you know and then when I plant the uh, the wheat for next time, uh, I want to see, I want to do the, the, the application of the guns, uh, I mean the nanomaterials in my, uh, uh, the five acres of, the, of wheat that I'm going to be uh, planting for this um, uh, winter season. And I want to see how the, uh, the, the wheat develops. I already have some wheat seeds that I got from my, from springtime. And those were not, um, I would say, usually I only get seeds that are certified organic uh, from my uh, suppliers. But this one were just native um, uh, wheat. But I saw in these ones that they really develop a, a, a really bush-like type of thing. You know, a lot of them came from, uh, from those areas. And I kept those seeds to repeat to see if those um, uh, develop more, more, uh, more seed, you know. I saw that, yes, I, I, I was shaking the roots to see, see if, if there were many seeds, you know, growing at the spot. When, when I did the planting, I, I was watching the plants to develop and see, if, you know, and I saw these patches, really strong patches of, of the weight, and I kept those seeds for the next uh, experiment. I also, I, guess a lot, I got a lot of the lettuces from my uh, springtime vegetables that were also a lot of seeds. I got almost a bucket a half, and a half of, of, of seeds just from uh, cilantro and, um, and the lettuces that, that I grew. And I'm going to use those seeds next time, you know, to do my, my planting again for the uh, uh, springtime again. Or I, I would say in November, that's when we start planting the lettuce, you know, uh, for the uh, uh, vegetable time. Thank you very much. Thanks for... Is there anything else you can share with us or we go to the next... Yeah. Uh, I was, 
I was still, you know, taking pictures and reporting the uh, the progress as I go with the, the to the next page. And from there, we can determine, you know, the the uh, the uh, uh, the level that we can acclimatize different seeds for different conditions, you know, and we can grow in, in the desert or because we have here sometimes, you know, in some areas, very desert-like conditions. And that's my whole idea, you know, to really grow here at, at, at these conditions with these uh, uh, nanomaterials. So far, it seems that it's working and I want to be keep repeating, you know, the, the process if it repeats, and then I know that, you know, I'm gonna be trust, trusted in that I can put a, whole, a huge area with those, not just small areas. I would say, okay, I'm now gonna put five acres of this and really have a, a, a big production of the, uh, either wheat or corn, you know, in my, in my next uh, application. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing knowledge with us. Um, Mr. We'll have you again next week. You think you can tell us more or show us more harvest? I yes. can I ask a question. If you eat these seeds, do they taste any different? Because uh, you've been consuming them last time. I was chewing some seeds when I was, you know, harvesting. And they, uh, they taste sweeter. Sweet. Like uh, they develop more of the uh, of the uh, carbohydrates uh, uh, in them, and possibly a lot of protein too. Mm. You know, because we know the corn has a lot of carbohydrates. They do all you know corn syrup, and this word you know these corns that are usually to make tortillas, you know, and to make uh, different things. This showing a yeah, really sweet flavor and also the ones that I got I got some popcorn um, uh, seeds and I want to try to do some popcorns uh, as soon as they get dry I want to see if they, they develop a good popcorn when I uh, um, put it in the heat you know? and I want to taste those too you know see see how they, well, they get hotter yeah <laughs> Or give more, give more energy, you know. That's going to be part of the of the uh, uh, of the uh, savoring that I'm going to do next week. As soon as they get drying up, I'm going to do some popcorns and put some, you know, some honey. And see how they taste. Okay, that's perfect. Thanks very much. Please, when you make a note uh, next time, use the the logo of the Keshe Foundation Space Institute. Okay, I, I want to talk to uh, Enrique. He is the one who put the the the, the logo, yeah. the old logo. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Kenji, we have always used those those uh, logos, both for the uh, Spaceship Institute and for the for the case. Yeah, it was the new one which we're going to put out uh, before the next presentation. Oh, great! We, we will. We, we are a spaceship organization, so we use. We our always recognize that we are working there. <laughs> Thank I you very much like indeed. To, I would like to say something about your question on the uh, on the use of, of fertilizer guns in water, because there is this uh, uh, very well known uh, experience of with biodynamic agriculture, in which it was developed a hundred years ago. And it is done by taking some manure into some uh, cow horns, has to be cows, female cows, obviously, and uh, they're buried in the ground for from September to March. And after that, it's receiving the energy from the earth, and so uh, the manure gets um, kind of mineralized. And you take one of or two of those uh, of that product, or no, two pieces of that product into water, 200 liters of water in, in a barrel, and you wheel it around uh, to the right for one hour, and then you wheel it around to the left for another hour, like a, uh, like a special uh, combination, 
And there you have the best super fertilizer that is known uh, in organic agriculture. Perhaps that can give you a hint of what can happen with the, with the, with the GANs. <laughs>